Let's talk about positions in ground grappling or ground fighting from sort of least to worst or worst to least as the case may be. So as you know, if you haven't already seen the video, of course, go look at it. But as you probably already know, there are six major positions in grappling or ground fighting that you spend the majority of your time in, right? So <clears throat> that is the mount, the side mount or side control, knee on chest, guard, back mount, and turtle, right? So those are the main positions. And again, like I said, you can go review that if you like and actually review the positions. We'll do it briefly in this video as well, uh, but not as much in some other videos. And then of course you want to break those down and watch the videos that are specific to those. And each one of these positions that we do when we're training, there's both offensive and defensive, or defensive and attack, attack and defend, you know, as you like to terminology. It's up to you on what you want to call, but essentially you're looking at offensive, meaning you're attacking, and defensive, meaning you're trying to protect yourself from an attack. And so you want to think of it from categorically from worst to best or best to worst. And they sort of intersect them, themselves. So if you've got the worst is back mount, right? And the best is back mount, or you can flip that. The best is back mount for you if you're the attacker, and the worst is back mount for them. And then all those little you know, categories go in between those positional categories. So if he's on his, uh, on his knees, for example, and I take his back, right, and I'm putting in a rear naked and I sink my, my hooks in, he's in the worst position that he could be in. Now that could be, go ahead and sit on your back, backside, sit down. Okay, so I could be mounted here. Now granted, this is more vertical than if we're laying down, but this is a back mount mounted position. As I start to fall back, put my hooks in to spread his legs out and I'm trying to prevent him from defending himself, and as I arch this, so this is a very bad position for him, but it's a very good position for me. Um, it, as well as if he's laying face down, again, I've got back mount at this point and I'm going after something here. So from worst to best or best to worst, best for me, worst for him, same with those other positions in terms of the back mount. Make sense? All right, so the next one is the actual mount itself is his chest is up, and I'm going to get into that mounted position so that I can take advantage of him and really pummel and ground and pound and that kind of thing. Again, the mount, best for me, right, if I'm attacking, worst for him if he's defending. Again, if you go from best to worst to worst to best. Make sense? And the next position, of course, is going to be, uh, some people argue that the side control um, is a better position. I'm not sure about that. I think side control and knee on chest are pretty comparable to, to being mounted, but the mount is a really, really strong position. So I would say next in line is probably going to be knee to chest where I put all of my pressure here and I start raining down punches. Best for me, worst for him, okay? As opposed to side control or side mount where I'm 90 degrees to him and I'm looking to do scarf or some kind of control or uh, maybe do an Americana or whatever. Um, it's a very good position for me, again, a bad position, or becoming more and more neutral, if you will. So you want to look at it again, worst to best, or best to worst, or flip that, best to worst and worst to best. Sort of categorize it in your head in terms of how it works. When you're the one that's fighting, you're always looking for the best possible position for yourself. So thinking about it from that nature, it's easy for me to say, back mount is best for me, Mount is best for me. Next in line would be knee on chest, right? Or side control, followed by a real neutral position for both of us would be the guard, right? So if I'm in his guard, I can still fight pretty well. So it's somewhat neutral for me because I can pass the guard. I can do things to get open his guard up. I can still throw some punches down. If I've got a long reach, like one of my students is six foot six, and he's got like a 72 inch reach, right? Which is like, I don't even understand how that's humanly possible. But he has a reach that greatly, greatly um, dwarfs mine in comparison, right? I've got like a three inch reach, okay? So um, that's what she said. Okay, so if I'm punching here, uh, I probably won't have the same effect as he would, or even Jamie here, he has a much longer reach than I do as well. And so in this case, we're sort of a neutral position. We're both going to be juxtaposing and trying to get the position of dominance. Uh, I like to fight from the guard, so I tend to always feel a bit more confident when I'm in the guard itself. 
Uh, so you could, again, depending on your skill set and whether or not you're really talented in the guard or you're not talented in the guard, this can be quasi-neutral, right? In the case of me and Jamie right now, it's probably better for me. Um, I'm a little bit more skilled on either side, so it wouldn't necessarily be neutral for him. It would be probably just slightly on the, I'm not wanting this position, okay? So, again, I'm, getting, I'm doing this to try to get you to think about hierarchy in terms of how these positions work with each other and how they benefit you or how they can detract away from your overall strategy. So, again, if I'm in his guard, go ahead and flip out. I can, of course, break that guard and move into a better position. He can be in my guard. And if I'm competent in the, in the guard, remember, three positions, general positions in the guard, closed, open, and then half, right, where I got half of it. So those are my options. Um, I would say, generally speaking, if you're the one on the bottom, this is a good neutralized position. This is a good position to work from. It is less neutral here, because he can then start to move a lot better, and you have less control on your legs. And then, of course, somewhere in the middle on the half guard, okay, in terms of worst for me, better for him. And that, again, will vary depending on your skill sets, okay? If I'm very good at arm bars or good at triangle and so forth and so on, as he starts to escape, I might have a very good chance of, of escalating from that worst position to a better position. Now, the worst position, again, semi-neutral but moving to worst, is when he turtles. So let's say that I've ended up on his back here, and he gets into a really crunched turtle position, and he's trying to protect himself, right, depending on how he moves and where he puts his arms and that kind of thing. I'm trying to bounce around here. He's still relatively protected, so it's definitely not the worst, but it's definitely not the best, if that makes sense. So if you just try to think of it from that perspective, think about those six major dominant positions and try to think about your defenses and offenses because everything I do is going to affect him, everything he does is going to affect me, and how we move each other on the mat, how we go for submissions, how we look to win that particular fight or that particular competition is going to be based largely, largely upon our own skill sets and our competencies in each one of these positions for both defending and attacking. Because if you're good at attacking, you will start to recognize some of the defensive postures or if he's trying to attack you, you'll recognize those attacks because you're competent in those attacks. Likewise, if you're good at the defenses and he's good at the defenses, he's going to recognize as you start to defend those particular positions. So it really is a chess game, just like I tell my students all the time. The ground game, standing game, all of it's really just chess. It's just the ability to know what to do, when to do it, and the people who play, play chess more are going to generally survive and have a better competency than somebody who's a relatively you know, start out player in chess, right? Grandmaster in chess versus a new player. New player is going to get ran up and down the chessboard. The same happens in the mat. You get somebody who's relatively competent, somebody who's at a higher ranking in, the, in their studies versus somebody who's relatively new off the street and doesn't have a lot of experience on the ground and you're going to dominate that person who's new. It's just the way it is. So try to think of it from that perspective, worst to, worst to best or best to worst and put yourself in that category from defensive and offense, and that'll help you build your understanding of the ground game overall so that you can apply it to your overall strategy for being able to fight.